So, and also we have with us today, we have, oh, there he is. He's, he's taking his mask off. We have Tim Timmons with us, who's going to be, <clears throat> he is a singer, songwriter, a recording artist, and he's from Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, he led worship and, and uh, shared his testimony yesterday as well. And I'm excited that we can all come together and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because that's what we want to do. Amen. And I want to say this. Maybe you haven't come prepared, but I'm sure you, you probably have. Most of you, at the end of the service, we, we are taking up an offering. Uh, there'll be offering plates at the door for Tim, okay, to get him back to Nashville. His wife wants him back. So we want to make sure he has plenty of gas to get there. So, Tim, hey, it's up to you now. You've got it, brother. Good. Hi. Well, I've got four kids. My wife's like, well, you keep doing what you're doing. But my four kids are like, get your back here. You know what I mean? We've got a, a let's see, how, how many kids do I have? I've got four that feels like 20. Um, we have Malia, who's 13, Noah, who's 11, and then we had surprise pregnancy that happened to be twins, and um, I said some strong things at that point um, in my heart, and we call them the Twimmins, last name's Timmins, you get it, and they're a girl and a boy, and they're awesome. I'm going to tell you more about my life story. Uh, I'm just kidding. I won't. Uh, well, it's been really great. Yesterday was awesome. You have a great uh, leadership community here. So just so you know, I get to travel the country and be with people and I've loved being with your leadership and with your volunteer team and just the men yesterday. It was really awesome. So anyways, just affirming you guys and your whole crew. So an honor to be with you. There it is. Oh, Jesus, would you remind us of things all day long? And as we gather this morning, would you remind us of things about you that we may have just forgotten, even just this morning? Thank you that you're here with us. So our response is, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas they roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hand. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand, and nothing can. To the prompt I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you.
bow down and the seas they'll roar at the sound of your name I sing for joy at the work of your hand forever I'll love you forever I'll stand and nothing compares to the promise I have oh and nothing compares to the promise I Hey, for a second, I know we have masks on, well, you do. What are some of the promises of God? Would you even just kind of say some out loud? Never leave us or forsake us. What else? What are the promises of God? Lasting love, life. I'll be with you everywhere. Always here for us. You have a promise of an everlasting life. Yeah, that starts today. What if these were true? Okay. I always get in trouble. Whenever I ask that question, I always get in trouble. But what? Always takes care of his children. I'll ask a different question. What if we lived like these were true? You know, I mean, it's just such a different. We could all just go, yeah, we got it. Yep, that's true. But like, what would our day look like if we actually lived as though it was true? Yes, at least the chaos in our souls would be gone. One of my heroes, his name is Dallas Willard, and he talks about living an unoffendable life. That when we're seeking first the kingdom of God, that that's our aim, not my kingdom or how I can get my way, that I can actually live an unoffendable life. Because my aim is just on what is Jesus at work doing? So nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise we have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. So I told the story yesterday and well I like telling it so don't stop me but my daughter came to me uh, a few years back and she was praying for me before I went out on tour somewhere oh I mean it's just it's that cute you know it's like that how cool is that and my daughter she mimics uh, she mimics my prayers the prayers she hears me pray which are both awesome and terrifying And she said, Jesus, would you be with daddy as he goes out on this thing? You know, melt moment. And then it hit me at that moment, hearing her say it, that it's probably the worst prayer I've ever taught my daughter. It's like me going right now, Jesus, would you be with us as we gather? And he's like, um, I don't know. Let me, yeah, you know what? I'll be there today. But ask again tomorrow, because who knows? It's crazy. So that's almost like a, a bad word in our house right now, that, that kind of prayer. It's like, no, he's already here. We just get to join him. We don't have to say, please be with me today in this tough meeting. He already is. So that's why I write these songs, and they're more than songs. They're actually just prayers. 
Reminding me that everywhere I go On this road high and low Where I go, I go with you So I won't be afraid This my hope, come what may Where I go, I go with you Where I go, I go with you There's a city calls me by name there's a city that calls me by name yes as i run this race i am cheered by the saints there's a city that calls me by name again your turn there's a city that calls me by name come on say it there's a good yes as i on you the almighty I will 
cast my cares on you cause you're good I will cast my cares on you cause you love me you love me Part of my journey, um, well, people often say, Tim, would you share your story? And I say, well, I think I know what you mean by share your story, but uh, well, I'll explain. I was given five years to live 20 years ago um, with an incurable cancer. That's what they said. And uh, I still have tumors in my liver that they say that are wearing on my heart today. And that's what they keep saying every time I go in. <laughs> and I just keep waking up. So when people say, would you tell me, or tell us your story? I'm like, well, I think you mean cancer, but that's the dumbest story I've ever heard. Like there's nothing, odd. that's just, that's dumb. The story is seeing Jesus in the midst of it and all through it and the journey and the battle that I walk with daily and the things that happen and when you're in the hospital and all these things are happening and you're like, okay, Jesus, where are you at? Jesus, what are you doing? How do I join you in what you're doing? What are you revealing? And when I'm able to actually start asking questions that matter, well, my heart just starts to change. So in my life, I've experienced, um, you know, and all of you have your own journeys. But I, I've worried a lot in my life. Worry has actually become um, a bit of an addiction. And as I travel the country, I think that's actually something that I see for the most part is that worry has just become this addiction that we have. Not that these things aren't worth freaking out about in some ways, right? But Jesus is pretty clear saying, hey, Tim, you can totally worry if you want. Go right ahead. But how's that doing for you? Every time I worry, I become the king of my kingdom. Ladies, every time you worry, you become the queen of your queendom, right? Because if I have my way, because I'm the king, this is what gets to happen. I get this. This is going to happen. And if it doesn't, I get mad at God for it. But it was really my kingdom the whole time anyways. Seek first the of his righteousness and he seems to work things out. He's at work. Seek first the of and he knows what he's doing. This is a good thing just to like hear and go, oh man, I agree. But like what if we lived like that were true? So when I write these songs, these prayers, this is the invitation for me to be reminded today that I'm going to cast my cares on you. So even as we pray this, what are you worrying about this morning? What worries did you bring into this place? Worry finds me when worry 
finds me in the middle of a fight. In the middle of a fight. When strength is gone, good. In the middle of a fire. When fear is closing in, you are, you are my song. You're my hope when hope is gone. So I will cast, so I now cast my cares on you, the Almighty. I will cast my cares on you, cause you're good. I will cast my cares on you, cause you love me, you love me. Oh, oh, because you love me. Oh, oh, because you love me. So check this out. God of glory. You are able through your power to be faithful. God of mercy, every moment you are near to me. What if we live like that was actually true? Not just December 25th, Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us, but like all week long. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of me, inside of you. And we'd say, God of glory, you're able. You are able through your power, through your power. Be faithful. Be faithful. God of mercy. God of mercy. Every moment you are near. my cares on you cause you love me you love me oh oh because you love me oh oh because you know my name oh oh because you love me remind my soul oh oh because you So these worries that we are holding on to that are so heavy. <laughs> Jesus, would you just remind us at this moment just to actually let them go? That we'd actually cast them into your hands. That weight would be transferred from our hands and the grips to yours. Thank you that you're able. Not only that you're able, but you're willing and that you're good. Whether we feel that or not, we're going to live as though that, are tr that was true right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for waking us up another day. Amen. All right, you guys take a seat. Hello, hello, checking, checking, checking. Is it going? Good. I just get to share a few thoughts and things that uh, I don't know, I think Jesus has put on my heart. Thank you. One was please turn on the lights. That's what I was going to say. So I feel like, I guess I'm done. Let's go back to this. It's going to be great. Uh, many of you have lived much longer than I have. Some of the stories that I've already heard have been so powerful. And so some of this is going to be such like a duh statement to you. So just love me through it and just love this young buck up here who's learning stuff today. Maybe this is a good reminder. But this stuff has been blowing my mind. Uh, I have a first off, I'd like to confess something to you. Um, that I quit working for Jesus about 10 years ago. So I don't work for him anymore. 
Okay. Well, that went over well. I feel like you guys really accepted that, and I think we're doing great. Uh, I quit working for Jesus 10 years ago. Literally, it was like this, well, that didn't work, and uh, I'm done. I'm done working for you. So I decided that I'm going to stop working for you. I'm just going to start walking with you. Yeah. And it has like literally completely revolutionized the joy factor in my heart. Uh, <laughs> we had dinner last night, and I was telling them that I, I was kind of a varsity American Christian most of my life. Like varsity. Like if there's a Letterman jacket that you got to wear for being a varsity American Christian, I don't know what emblem. It would have like a cross and a something. I don't know what it would be on there. But I kind of wore it. I, I was telling them I'm one of the better Christians that I know. <laughs> like I'm kind of awesome. I have been awesome. I mean, quiet times, you know, because that's what you do. It's like in our thing, this is, I'm not dogging in quiet times. They're, these are so powerful and wonderful, but just go with me, okay? My quiet times is rocking those evangelism. It's like, you want to, I'll, I'll get you into our club. Watch this, you know? It's almost as if Jesus needed me to do this or else. Loving other people. It's like, well, this is my duty. Helping the poor, going on mission trips, trying not to sin. Like, Tim, you need to stop sinning. You just need to stop this, right? It's called fruit of my labor. Self-discipline. Tim, be patient. Would you just stop worrying? Because Christians, we don't, we don't worry. Be a good husband. Be generous. Tim, be generous. Would you stay joyful in this situation? In your cancer journey, Tim, be strong and courageous. Just do it. It was like this real transactional thing between me and God for most of my life. I was working for him nonstop. I mean, I was a pastor of this community out in California and doing all these things and working so hard for God working so hard for him. But really, I ended up completely exhausted. Like soul tired. Like, like not good. Like I'm the guy who has all this stuff. I have the answer to everything. I've got the Bible answer for everything. But I also have Jesus. I've got this answer that I'm supposed to, if I live this out, then, I, then everything's going to be great. And everything wasn't great. I was like literally dying in my soul, going, if I'm this awesome at being a Christian, but this thing isn't working out, like how do I sell that? So I started asking these questions. Uh, I just took a step back and I said, what does Jesus actually care about? I mean, what does he actually care about? What's my role in life and in the things God cares about? Because I know what, uh, our religion cares about, and I know what we're supposed to do. You know, just, in, you guys are way beyond this. I'm just, it was my thing. It's how I grew up in this way of like, do, 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 do. Do this, be with God in your quiet times, but you're still doing. Everything's about doing. Uh, what does God really think about me on my best day and on my worst day? These are my questions. What drains me and what gives me life? These were the questions that I was talking about because I was so exhausted from being such an awesome Christian. So here's the difference between working for him and working with him. Working for him is earning his love and earning his attention, right? I mean, just th think about, put this in your own context, in your own life. Are there moments in your own life when you feel like you're kind of earning his love or earning his attention? Like, well, if I do good in this, if I don't do this, I, mean, I, I do that often, <laughs> This is not like, man, I, I'm, I solved this. This is just like this awakening to, oh, gosh, I've spent most of my life earning, truly earning, even though I know grace is free and this is all awesome and he loves me no matter what, I still spend so much of my time going, well, if I do this, I think he'll be happier with me. Or if I, if I do this, then I'll get this. I'll get more of his attention. 
Working with, uh, walking with him is walking in his love and his attention. So for is earning love and attention. With is walking in his love and attention. Do you see the difference? It's just, it's like, it's just bonkers. Working for him has become a job to me and a duty. Walking just with him is this relationship idea. Working for him is in my power. It's always in my power. We talk about the fruit of the Spirit uh, often. And yet as I look at love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, generosity. I mean, there are so many. These were things that were part of what I thought, Tim, this is your job to produce these suckers. Like, that person needs something? All right, I'm going to pull up my bootstraps and I'm going to do this. I worked for him my whole life, and it left me nowhere. So working, working for him was in my power. Walking with him is in his power, in his wisdom. I, again, I told you I was a pastor, and I'm sharing some of my journey with you. Um, and as I was a pastor, everything was kind of generally about the gathering. It's like, come here, and we'll tell you about Jesus, and we'll tell you, bring your friends here, and we'll tell them about Jesus, and, which is all great, and that happens, and it's beautiful. But just love me through this. Uh, there are 10,080 minutes in a week. 10,080 minutes in a week. You just Google it, and I'm right. Uh, 80 of those minutes are spent in this place right here. And let me just celebrate the fact that you guys are gathering, and we are gathered today in the name, in the power, and the authority of Jesus. So well done, and we're encouraged often, well done to keep gathering well. And I already love the people that get to hang with you. That's awesome. 80 minutes. But then we get to scatter now with the next 10,000 minutes until we gather again. And it's not what do we do in the next 10,000 minutes. I mean, we're all, you you stand up and we, we do, that's what we do, but... What's the posture of your heart in the next 10,000 minutes? So I started this, um, this nonprofit, and I started blogging five years ago, and starting to do these different videos, and I, there's a book out there, it's really just a manual, a journal, of how to walk with Jesus instead of working for him. It's kind of a daily, so if you want to check that out, go ahead. But what's it look like for us to actually see Jesus and be more aware of him in my 10,000 minutes? So what I would do is I could, you know, up here is like, I surrender all. Literally, I'm like, I surrender all, all to Jesus. And then I walk out the door, and then somebody cuts me off out there. And in my heart, I'm like, oh, no, you did not, you know. And I was telling the guys yesterday that, that I would, I'll drive by people if they cut me off, and I will, I'll give them a good Christian smile. I'll just kind of wave, and I'll, no, no problem. But in my heart, which is what actually matters, I'm thinking, I'm better than you. I'm better than you, which is called contempt. Every time I feel better than somebody else, that's called contempt. And just a side note, I, there's so much going on in our lives right now, in our world, and conspiracy theories, and, and all the things, Right? And it's just a danger zone, a hotbed of contempt right now. And just an invitation for you and an invitation for me that in this season, uh, I'm often having to say, Jesus, would you, would you put my soul and my heart on trial? Because contempt's coming out because I'm often saying, you believe that? <laughs> I am so much better than you. Think about it. But even that, this is a place where I could go, you know what, I'm not going to think about that. Next time, I'm just going to love that person really well. But then what happens? Somebody else cuts me off again, and they've just irritated me again. Or somebody else gets on Facebook and does their, drop their bombs on Facebook, and you're like, uh-uh, you did not just say that again. I am better than you. Like, there's this, pa- this power in us that we try to, like, gear up, and I try to gear up, and yet I keep trying to do it almost for God, but it just never works. Maybe you guys are way more awesome than I am, which could actually be true. But 
I just keep trying it in my own power, and I keep trying to earn this thing and work for God, and it keeps on not working. Your friend says, most of our issues in life stem from our incomplete view of God. Our view of God dictates how we live. It dictates, literally it will dictate this week how I respond to some of my friends who say certain things or really believe strongly about certain things. It will dictate how I love them well or not <clears throat> in my heart. This week, I will worry. You, think about when you worry, what are we saying? God's not trustworthy. Our view of God dictates how I'm going to live this life, this week, this day. So for, for you worriers out there, really what we're saying by worry is that, God, I just I actually don't trust you. I gave this to you to deal with, but you're kind of not holding up your end. FYI. Or for those of us that deal with fear, which is every single one of us in some way, that God is not in control and he's not good. That's actually what it's saying. This isn't a, a shame thing. I'm not saying can't believe we feel this. This is just what is. Shame is looking back and going, oh, I can't believe I think that. I'm oh, so mad. I think Jesus is asking us to move forward. So from today on, this is where we start moving forward. He's not in control, so that equals fear. His love has limits, and so I start earning stuff. My view of God dictates how I live. So if I view God as somebody that I'm supposed to work for, he's my boss. I'm a slave. I love how Jesus, and I know there's some interesting things because Paul says one thing, but uh, Jesus says, you guys are no longer slaves. You're actually my friends. I mean, over and over and over, you guys, it's so crazy. I'll just, I'll just share a few of these, these Bible verses. Actually, Paul only uses the word for, I think, three times, and it's all because out of this place of that we're loved, then we do something for God. But I forget the first part. I just start doing stuff for God. Witness is everywhere in the Bible. And it's just kind of coming to me like, oh, oh, that's actually what he means. You know, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And I go, yep, I've said that a million times, but what if it's actually true and it's not about working for him because he's not my boss. He's, I get, this is how he made it. Check it out, okay. Um, we'll do some of these scriptures. With man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Next in Matthew What's the greatest commandment? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Peace be or is with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. It's this witness. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I am with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Literally, I am with you. That's like... It's just over and over and over. And there's like, there are pages of notes that I have on this because I just started going, okay, where are all the places where he is, where witness is the point? It's not, hey, do this for me. Are you being a good Christian? No. Well, he didn't never start the religion anyways, but he's saying, guys, just be with me. I don't care what your background is. Just walk with me. I mean, that was everybody. That was... From any background, that's who he was saying. That's what he was saying, inviting us into. Or in the Old Testament, we've got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Which, you know, if you've been around, you know that story. But the thing that really rocked my world when I started looking with this lens is that he was with them in the fire. In this story, God with us became visible through the fire. Like, I, I talked about I talked on manure yesterday, which if you're, you can hear that talk at another point. But the idea was that God actually with us, he came out in the fire. You didn't see, there was no picture of God, Jesus almost, being with those guys when they're just walking around and hanging out in life. They had to be in the fire, and in the fires where you could actually just see the witness of God. And we have a, 
I have a choice every day. But I'm going to choose to actually see. I think they were so with him in that whole experience that it just was like this natural outflow that he would actually show up like that. He was already there. And they got to actually see him and walk with him. That just blew my mind. He's the only one who can walk on water. True. Yeah, in the Old Testament, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. I am with you. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because the Lord your God is with you everywhere you go. So here's a question. What would it look like this week if we were just practicing to walk with him for the rest of my day? Can you just close your eyes for a second? You don't have to, but you can. What would it look like in this next week? Even let's just start today. Let's go tonight as you go to bed. What would it look like to actually walk with him? about tomorrow morning? Think about where you are at 10.30 tomorrow morning. What would it look like for you to practice being with him tomorrow morning? Not working for him, just simply walking, sitting with him. What would it look like to practice trust instead of practicing worry today? a song that I wrote with a friend uh, years ago and it's been so helpful for me and you'll hear witness all through this song they say sometimes you win some sometimes you lose some right now Right now I'm losing bad Stood on the stage night after night Reminding the broken it'll be alright Right now, oh right now I just can't It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring What will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? My God, you're able and I know you can Save through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't, my hope unmovable Oh, give me 
the strength to be able to sing it as well with my soul. My God is able and I know He can. Save through the fire with your mighty hand. shimmy for and I really lived it you know I thought it was very inappropriate and it hit me in that moment that what would it look like if my daughter at the age of seven woke up to the idea that the same spirit that raised her raised Jesus from the dead like lives inside of her all day long not just like near her, but like the spirit lives in her, with her. Like what would that do? Just what would she see for the rest of her life? Like not wasting most of her time just working for God, but just, just joining him. 
What if you and I actually lived as though it were true? Not just believed it to be true, but lived as though the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lived inside of you and lived inside of me all day. I mean, what would that look like, people? It's called a revolution. Who cares about the religious stuff? That's a revolution where Jesus is doing stuff, and we join him in it because he is at work in all things. But we don't have to practice worry anymore. We practice trust because he's God, and he's at work in all things. <laughs> The same great light that broke the dark The same great peace that calmed the seas Hallelujah is living in me We're going to do it one more time I think we need to Let's try it again The same great light that broke the dark One, two, three The same great light that broke the dark Good The same great peace that calmed the seas Hallelujah is living in me all Gives us breath, the same great power that conquered death. Hallelujah, yeah. it's flowing through me all week long. And what, what if I believed in your power and I really lived it? What, what if I believed Christ in me? Down. Come on, and see these hills as level ground. What if I believe Christ in me? Then I would praise you with my life. Good. And let my story lift you high. What if I believe Christ in me? Here we go. The same great love that casts out fear. The same same 
spirit I cannot contain. Oh, oh, so everywhere I go on this road. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, Tim. Let's... Great job. Great job. Great message through the whole thing. We appreciate that so much. Hey, I want to encourage us as you leave, if you brought some extra cash with you, or if you've got a check, you can write it to Faith Covenant Fellowship, and we'll make sure it gets to Tim. But we're going to take an offering up for him. And there'll be some ushers at the door if you want to position yourself there the two ushers thank you and i would just like to close this out in prayer let's pray father thank you so much for tim being here and and uh, thank you father for da dr david wolf being here and the great conference we had this weekend lord thank you for moving in the lives of your people lord we've learned one thing to this week that it's living with you and following you it's not working for you Lord, may we go out and live for you and follow you, Father. So we ask your blessing, Lord, upon these two ministries here. Lord, that you would just continue to use them for your honor and glory to change lives. We ask this all in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. God bless. Have a great week.